Hello, Cassidy here from the Information Addicts Podcast, coming to you again from the desert. Um, for those of you who noticed, I didn't post last week, and no, Jacob did not cancel me. I just got sick and had some very exciting things happen, and so I didn't end up having a chance to actually post. Um, I have a couple conversations in the log um, that I could have posted, but I, I'm trying to be very intentional about the way that I post those coming up because um, there's some really good stuff in there and I, I want to make sure I pace it out right. But I also have some fun, exciting things to tell you about that are happening to me personally. So I wanted to do this first before I started releasing all those conversations. So I apologize for not making a video last week and uh, for anyone who was very worried about me being canceled, don't worry, I'm not that famous. <laughs> I can't be canceled yet. <laughs> Probably never. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> I wanted to uh, start by giving a couple announcements. The first one uh, is actually very exciting. So uh, for some of you who have been following me, you might know that I am a filmmaker. Uh, it's one of the things I do as a profession. And for the last three years, I've been working on my first feature, which is a documentary about the tip-free restaurant movement, sort of why restaurants are starting to include tips and gratuities into their pricing and sort of how minimum wage affects it all. It's a very big project. Got way out of hand, bigger than I thought it was going to be, but it's been a very long three years, and I'm excited to announce that it is officially premiering at the Portland Film Festival. Um, for people who know me well, uh, they know Portland has a special little place in my heart, and so the fact that it gets to premiere there is just, um, it's unbelievably special, and I'm very overwhelmed <laughs> by it all. Um, and that's one of the things that have kept me very busy, getting all of the things that I need, all the assets that I need to send over there. And uh, so it's been a, a whirlwind of, of sorts. <laughs> but um, anyways, the whole festival this year is being presented digitally. So that means if you'd like to see what I do outside of this little passion project, you can. Um, I will put the link to the screening below. If you'd like to watch it, great. If not, no worries. Just giving you that option. <laughs> um, if you do watch it, we are up for a potential audience award. I don't expect to win it. I don't expect to win any awards. Um, just being there is like the best thing. But it's always nice to get an award for the film. It, it helps have some credit. Um, so if you want to vote for the film, you think it's great, that would be awesome. <laughs> um, so that's that. Um, the second thing that I want to announce, uh, this month I am scheduled to officially become an official Orthodox Christian. <laughs> My chrismation is uh, going to be on Sunday, October 17th. and. That is also very overwhelming. It's been a long time coming of poking and prodding, trying to understand whether I would actually take the leap into conversion. And uh, I feel pretty positive that I'm going to. Uh, the last sort of thing that I have left to explore is Judaism, which I've been doing for a little while. And maybe I should back up a little bit <laughs> on that story. I don't know if I've mentioned it yet, but I've been, uh, I've obviously been working towards orthodoxy and trying to figure out whether it was the thing I wanted to commit to and participate in and the thing that I thought was true. And through that process, I, I've spent a lot of time just really questioning the things I grew up with and what I believed and, um, revisiting a lot of questions about religion and uh, things that I had believed or thought or had been taught. And as I was getting closer and closer to 
becoming, uh, or as I was going through catech like my catechumen process of becoming an Orthodox Christian and moving towards chrismation, I realized the only sort of real unexplored territory that was left that I felt needed to be explored a little deeper was Judaism. And it's hard to say it was unexplored <laughs> because I, I feel as a Christian and um, the way that I grew up, at least in Christianity, uh, there was a real deep respect for the Jewish faith, knowing that Christianity came from that. And there was a real, um, yeah, just like a real love for myself, for the Torah and the, the uh, just the Old Testament in general. And so I felt like I had been studying in a certain way, but I recognized it was all from this Christian lens. Oh! oh. Sorry. <laughs> she scared me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is always such a mess, isn't it? <laughs> um, so, what was I saying? Oh, so it was always from this Christian lens, from this Christian frame. And so... I really felt like there was some need for myself to really try and challenge that and see what is Judaism about, what is it really, and uh, what are my misconceptions about it, and um, is that more valid than Christianity? So I have been attending some Shabbat services with my wonderful friend Alyssa, who actually I have a conversation coming up here in the future. She's just so great and um, I'm very excited to release it, but she's been so wonderful in being willing to share her faith with me and, and talk really genuinely about the things that I'm going through and the ways that I'm trying to process through it all. And she's taken me to Shabbat services. She's uh, invited me over for Shabbat dinner. She's even invited me to like Yom Kippur services so I, I can see some of their holidays. And my participation in Judaism has struck me in certain ways. And the more that I participate, the more that I actually um, have got a bit more of a peace with the orthodoxy. Um, I think the first thing that I really noticed is how um, when, I, when I went to the Jewish services and participated in their... their uh, celebrations and the, and the things they do, it struck me how reminiscent it was, or similar it was to the way that the Orthodox did their services. And it was really interesting for me as a non-denominational Protestant upbringing, it would have been so foreign to me going straight from that to a Jewish service, it wouldn't have connected at all, yet having that exposure to orthodoxy and participating in liturgy and a more traditional form of participation, I really saw where these services came from. And I loved that there was a respect in that Jewish faith of still holding on to a lot of the things that um, the Jewish people still do today. And that was really... Um, that was really beautiful, but, um, yeah, I still left with a lot of questions about sort of Judaism, so I actually have a conversation with Alyssa's rabbi here in, uh, a week or so, <laughs> uh, so right before my chrismation to just ask some of the hard questions and really dip, dig deep down, um, and I'm still not totally sure what I'm going to ask. I know there is a part of me that wants to ask about um, sort of the conception of the Messiah. What is that um, in the Jewish perspective, at least as a modern frame, and I'm sure there are many, but th that's something that I really want to ask, and I really want to understand his perception of Jesus and, and who he is and why he couldn't be a messianic figure. Um, 
and I'm just really interested to hear those answers. Um, the other thing that sort of leaves me kind of questioning and that I've been working through with the Jewish faith is a lot of the, the prayers. So um, they're all very beautiful um, prayers, and they, they read through these prayer books, and um, they focus a lot on the, the people of Israel and their, their family, the history, the lineage. And as far as I know, uh, I am not Jewish culturally or genetically in any way. So I don't have that heritage. And I feel that if I converted to Judaism, I could say those prayers and, and try to participate in those things. But there would be this huge part of me that felt like I was just trying to sneak in or appropriate something that was never mine to begin with. And I know it's just, for me, there's this appeal to Christianity because it's always, from the beginning, it's, it's welcomed me in, in a certain sense. You know, there's a big, there, there wasn't only, obviously the first Christians were Jewish. Jesus was a Jew himself. But very quickly after that, there was a lot of, uh, non-Jewish people, the Gentiles, who were also welcomed in and a part of that service. And for me, that feels like a place that I could come in and still be a part of that. And it would feel just so odd to say these prayers and feel like they weren't mine. And that is, that, that that's a part of, um, my, my hesitancy with Judaism, although I'm sure there are, I'm sure he has an answer to that because I think there are people who are not uh, culturally or genetically Jewish who become Jewish. And I mean, there's some patterns of that in the Bible as well, but I, it, it's something that I think about and I, I'd like to hear an answer to. Um, the other thing that really stops me from feeling like I will convert to Judaism and be a part of that faith is because of my belief and trust in Jesus. I think there, I think there's a lot of that that could be said was just bred into me through my upbringing. I grew up believing that. I had a family who taught me that. And so, um, because of that, I might be more inclined to have those feelings and those warm fuzzies about this Jesus character and uh, mis mischaracterize or misrepresent him. But I, I think as I went through deconstruction, I did a lot of <laughs> poking and prodding at Jesus and who he was, and it's been really hard to shake him, and it's been there's just something in my soul that still can't honestly say I don't believe that he was this messianic figure that the Jewish people were looking for and towards. Now, I, I recognize I could be working on bad evidence, bad assumptions of the evidence, all, all the like, and I'm willing to be uh, corrected and proven wrong. Um, but I, I don't know what that would look like, what, what it would be. And I, I think for myself, there is a big part of this, uh, historic view of Jesus that's compelling to me. Um, I think some of the ways it's talked about is flawed uh, and some of the, the, the spirit behind it is not always in the right place, but there's certain things that are very compelling to me and it's hard to shake. And um, I don't know, that's why I, I feel confident <laughs> announcing that I am gonna become Orthodox, even though I still have some more questions and things to poke and prod at. But um, I don't know. It's, it's definitely something I keep thinking about and keep trying to figure out what's the best way to get at that, at the core of those things, and ask those questions well. Um, 
But at the end of the day, I think I've been on a, a very long, <laughs> intense journey. And as I move closer and closer to chrismation, I just feel more and more peace. And I feel more and more joy that, you know, I'm feeling more settled in my beliefs and the things that I feel the very least called to participate in. And I look forward to the way that it will shape me and change me and um, continue to make me uh, a softer, more committed person. Because <laughs> um, I think it has. Um, yeah, I... I don't even know how to describe it really. It's just been such a a long, messy journey to try to um, understand how to participate well in the spiritual and understand what I believe and stand up for it well and communicate it well. And I just have seen with orthodoxy this whole different shift come over me, this different spirit that possessed me in a way that uh, makes it so much easier and less volatile (laughs) to talk about big questions and big ideas and um, particularly the, the things that I believe in religion. And so I'm just very grateful for that and Um, I am ready for whatever happens on Monday. (laughs) I may be coming to you next week going, forget what I said. (laughs) It's not happening. Um, But um, I don't feel like that will happen. (laughs) But um, I'm just, either way, I'm just very grateful for at least everything Orthodoxy taught me so far. And I'm super grateful for everything that Uh, Judaism has taught me so far and my participation with it. It's given me such a new beautiful perspective of it all and there's a lot of things that are said in those services that I don't know just sink very deep when I when I think about Jesus within that story as well and they just seem so compatible and beautiful and um, So I'm very grateful for that, and I'm very grateful for the peace it gave me and sort of that real clarity that the way that I was doing it before, um, it didn't give the proper respect to the thing that Christianity was born out of. And for myself, I do think that's important. I know people will disagree, but for me, there was something very important about that Um, anyways now I feel like I'm just babbling on (laughs) Um, that was mostly what I had to say I'm going to do have some other fun announcements coming down the line but uh, not ready to share all of that yet uh, publicly here so uh, eventually there'll be more of these little update videos maybe I'll do a walk and talk after my chrismation at some point and talk about that experience and um, sort of the participation as a full Orthodox member. That would be fun. Um, But I think in the next couple videos, I have a couple more conversations about gender, this time with ladies. So I'm excited to mix that up, get a different perspective, and um, then we'll see where we go. I have... uh, I've been trying to think about this idea of beauty and how to interweave it and everything that I am doing so far. And I'm slowly but surely uh, coming to a place to feel comfortable engaging with it and talking about it. But I just want to let it do a little bit longer in my brain and try to figure out the best way to say that because it's very important to me and I think it's connecting a lot of deep ideas, especially about the way that we consume information. And I want to do it right. <laughs> so look forward to those things. Thank you so much for dealing with my spazzy desert walks 
that are always incredibly uncomfortable and awkward, but uh, I appreciate you watching and listening and being willing for me to let me share and work through things that are more personal. It just feels like a better space to do those than necessarily in my structured uh, podcast setting. So anyways, thank you again. Um, let me know if you guys end up watching the film. I would love to know what you think and um, yeah, just be interesting to uh, have a conversation about that because that's a topic that has also been in my mind and a heart for a long time and um, I think there's a lot to be said about it. But anyways, um, you can hear me say all that in the film. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye.